The fictional hypersonic Dark Star pictured in the new Top Gun movie is a very ominous design by Skunk Works. There is speculation that its design is based on the SR-72. The successor to the Blackbird will be a revolutionary UAV capable of hypersonic Mach 6 speeds. Powered by a combined cycle, the system utilizes both a turbine at low speeds and a scramjet above Mach 2.5. It is no secret that hybrid engines will unlock a whole new level of aeronautical engineering. And the SR-72 will likely lead the forefront when it comes to hypersonic craft design. However, there are many companies building their own high-flying supersonic craft. And it's going to be a very interesting decade, so let's take a look at some of the best contenders out there. We begin with the X-59. The Quest will definitely not be the fastest aircraft around, but it could be one of the most important in development. It is being designed to produce a 75 decibel sonic boom, which is pretty much a car door closing, and it's considerably lower than the Concorde's 105 decibel rating. There are a few tricks in achieving this level, but it's mainly keeping a narrow frame and canards to minimize shock waves. The central engine also has a top mounted intake for a low boom profile. It will cruise around Mach 1.4, and it will lead to an acceptable commercial supersonic standard. In turn, this will lift the ban on supersonic travel over land. Moving on, we get to the Overture. Boom Aerospace is finally bringing back supersonic commercial flight. The Overture will roll out midway to 2030, and several airline companies have already made pre-orders. The jet will carry up to 80 passengers at a speed of Mach 1.7 with a range of 4,800 miles. The jet will probably make commutes over ocean, including trips from Tokyo to Seattle in about 4 hours or LA to Sydney in about 8 hours. Now to build a full out passenger jet is a little bit preemptive, so the company has built the XB-1 as a demonstrator which is currently undergoing testing. Moving on to suborbital vehicles we get to the Mark II by Dawn Aerospace. This particular prototype is powered from a fully throttable reusable rocket engine. A mixture of peroxide and kerosene provide a high specific impulse without any complicated cryogenic cooling. The main advantage to the Mark II is that it can climb up to 60 miles at Mach 3 without any drawback in performance. Eventually this will lead to a bigger variant which will be capable of launching a secondary orbital rocket. Payloads can reach over 500 pounds but the craft can be reused multiple times a day making it to be yet another option for accessing space. At number 4, the next generation Air Force One. Hermes is yet another company which has made it well past concept models, and they are working towards a 20 passenger Mach 5 craft. Testing has already begun on their quarter horse, which runs on a turbine based combined cycle. Otherwise known as the Chimera engine, it is a heavily modified General Electric J85. To obtain the elusive Mach 5 speed, the core is outfitted with a precooler and an aft ram jet. Naturally, there is a lot of interest in this project from the military, and this has led to a $60 million contract. At number 3, the Talon A. A fully reusable hypersonic Mach 6 craft is being developed by Strato Launch. Powered by a liquid propellant rocket engine, the autonomous vehicle will carry 6,000 pounds of payload. Talon will soon gather payload experiment data during flight, making the Talon A to be a testbed for hypersonic research. Not much has been revealed about the craft, but testing is expected to take place later this year. Many suborbital crafts are being designed to launch a secondary rocket into orbit. But the orbiter is a little bit different and it utilizes a three-stage process. A booster would actually propel the orbiter to Mach 5. It would then act as an intermediate stage and accelerate to Mach 12 in order to launch a third stage booster. This would amount to a payload of around 100 pounds into low earth orbit. Now of course this is a little bit unconventional being an intermediate stage, but it could also utilize four scram jets. Titled the Spartan, the scramjet would be the first 3D printed fixed geometry engine. Once again, the company is building a demonstrator which will showcase the engine along with the structural capabilities of the craft. But once completed, the scramjet may lead into other kind of designs which will be interesting as well. There are many concepts out there and for this video I tried to stick with craft that are partially in development and are beyond the concept phase. With the recent closure of Arion, this has exemplified the importance of prototyping, developing, and delivering a final product to the customer in a timely fashion. 
but it is worth mentioning the Exosonic, which would be a Mach 1.8 airliner with 70 seats, possibly making it the future contender for Air Force One. There have been several recent announcements with the craft being able to run on an eject fuel, which is supposedly carbon neutral. And then obviously we have the supersonic jet from Spike Aerospace, which I'm a little bit skeptical of now because they have not updated for about a year and one can only speculate how this project is progressing. The number one position is a little bit of a duality between the Skylon and Lapcat 2. Unlike other hypersonic vehicles, the Skylon would be a single stage to orbit craft. Powered by two groundbreaking sabers, the Skylon would either carry 33,000 pounds of cargo or 30 passengers into low Earth orbit. Turnaround time would be roughly two days, but the craft would be capable of performing 200 orbital flights. However, just like any rocket, most of the craft is a fuel tank, so it would definitely need a reinforced runway. It can be argued that the Starship rocket is already being built and it can already handle bigger payloads, but I think it's a little bit too early to say if this is the safest way for hypersonic passenger transportation. The Lapcat 2 might be a better option for reaction engines, as it would be able to carry 300 passengers at Mach 5 with the A2 Shimitar engines. One other option is to outfit the Lapcat with a secondary stage orbital rocket. Ultimately, I think it comes down to one factor, and that is reusability. And if these space planes can be reused multiple times in a day, then that would outclass the rockets of the future. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all these different aircraft. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.